Hello and welcome to the Wayne County Probate Court. This video will guide you in filling out form PC625, which is the petition for appointment of guardian of incapacitated individual. Before we get started, this video is not legal advice. It's for informational purposes only. You need to seek legal counsel or read the statutes and court rules to answer questions specific to your situation. So let's pull up the form from the Wayne County Probate Court website, www.wcpc.us. Here's the home page in the upper middle. You'll click probate information. On the left, click how to start a Wayne County probate case. You'll see the various case types. You can start with the court. This form relates to a guardianship. And you'll see the form link here. And you can begin to fill out the form directly on your computer. Now, some forms, SCAO forms, have written instructions, which when you have the electronic form, you can click on the link and it will bring up written instructions to help you fill out the form. We'll walk through it, though. You'll put the county as Wayne and the case number and judge. You can leave blank. If this is your first uh, file in with the court, which it most likely is, a case number and judge will be assigned. The court address and telephone number can be found on the Wayne County Probate Court website. In the matter of, you'll put the first, middle, and last name of the person who is alleged to be incapacitated. Then you'll file, uh, you'll fill out and file form. MC 97. It seeks the last four digits of the alleged incapacitated individual's social security number. You will not fill that out on this form, but you will fill it out on row two on form MC 97. Then for the petitioner's name, who presumably is you, you put name, address, and telephone number in this box. If there's an attorney, their information goes in this box. If no attorney, just leave it blank. Then some more information about the alleged incapacitated individual, who is sometimes referred to as a ward. The date of birth should go on row one on form MC-97. And the driver's license of the alleged incapacitated individual should go on row three on form MC-97. Then the race, sex, and address of where the individual is now found. Number one, I, you'll print your name, am interested in this matter and make this petition as You'll state the relationship you have to the alleged incapacitated individual who is named up here. Number two, if this is applicable to you, check the box. If not, leave it blank. Number two says an action within the jurisdiction of the family division of circuit court involving the family or family members of the person named above has been previously filed in. You'll put the court, the case number, and was assigned to judge. You put the last name of the judge and you'll check either remains or is no longer pending. Number three, the individual is a resident of, you'll put the city, village, or township, county, and state of where they live and the home address and telephone number. We'll go here. Then if this uh, sentence is true, you will check the box. The individual is a citizen of the following foreign country, and you'll put the country there. If not, leave it blank. Four, the individual has a patient advocate or power of attorney for health care. If that's true, check that box. The individual has a power of attorney. If that's true, check the box. The individual has a conservator. If that's true, check the box. And you'll put the names of each of the individuals and addresses below in this space. Number five, if this applies to you, check the box and then click the appropriate box that applies to your situation. If not, leave it blank. 
The patient advocate designation was not executed in compliance with MCL 700.5506. If you're not sure, you should read that statute. The patient advocate is not complying with the terms of the designation or of MCL 700.5506 to MCL 700.5512. Or the patient advocate is not acting consistent with the ward's best interests. If any of those apply, you will check box 5 in the appropriate box. Then, on all SCAO forms, there are references to either or both statutes which are MCL, and court rules, which are MCR. And you'll want to read the referenced statutes and court rules. So you can do an internet search for the statute reference. So here's the statute, MCL. And then you'll want to make sure you're clicking on the Michigan Legislature link and not some other link which is legislature.mi.gov. Once you confirm that, click the link, and it brings up the statute referenced. And same thing with court rules. You will want to read those. And a simple internet search of the referenced court rule will bring up The court rules, you want to make sure it's the Michigan Courts link that you're clicking on. Not always the first one, but once you confirm it's courts.michigan.gov, when you click the link, this is an electronic copy of the Michigan Court Rules, which you can reference the code section on the form. Okay, moving on to page two, number six. The individual lacks sufficient understanding or capacity to make or communicate informed decisions because of, you will check all that apply. And there's a blank space too. Number seven, specific facts about the individual's recent condition or conduct that lead me to believe the individual needs a guardian are. Please specify the circumstances that lead you to believe a guardian is necessary for the individual. Number eight, if it applies, you will check it. The person that has the care and custody of the individual denied another person access to the individual, and you will check the appropriate box or boxes. The individual desires contact with the other person, or contact with the other person is in the individual's best interest. Then B, specify facts about the need for a limited guardian to supervise access with the other person, R. Number nine, the name, address, and telephone number of the person or agency, if any, who currently has care and custody of the individual, R. So who is taking care of the person right now? Number 10, the individual is or is not entitled to receive veteran administration benefits. If they are, the veteran administration claimant number is. Put that in this blank. Number 11 relates to the alleged incapacitated individual's uh, relatives or interested persons. You will check all the boxes that apply. Then you will put the name, relationship, address and telephone number of each interested person. And here there's a space for the nominated guardian as well as the nominated standby guardian. And if you need additional space because there are more interested parties than spaces on this form, you may fill out on a separate sheet all of the interested parties' name, relationship, address and telephone numbers and file it with the petition. Moving to number 12 on page 3. None of the persons named above, that is here in the interested parties section, are under any legal incapacity except. So if someone is under or has a legal incapacity, their name as well as the person who represents them will go in 12. 
If there aren't any people, you can just leave it blank. 13, this is your request. I request that the court determine the individual is an incapacitated individual. And I want the court to appoint the named person along with their address who has priority as, and you'll state your priority by law of being a guardian. Then you will either check full guardian with all powers provided by statute or limited guardian with the following powers. So you're seeking the court to appoint the person named here to be the guardian and whether you want a full guardian or a limited guardian. And you can designate a standby guardian. And you'll put their name and address and telephone number here. 14. No other person appears to have authority to act in the circumstances. I request that a temporary guardian be appointed pending a hearing on this petition because of the following emergency. And you will explain the circumstances here in 14. Then you'll make the declaration to the court. I declare under the penalties of perjury that this petition has been examined by me and that its contents are true to the best of my information, knowledge, and belief, date, and signature of the petitioner. If there's an attorney helping, they will date and sign as well. And finally, the alleged incapacitated individual may nominate their own guardian and standby guardian. And if that's the case, you'll check box 15. In the event the court finds that I require a guardian, I nominate, put the name, address, city, state, and zip, and telephone number of the person to be appointed guardian. And if applicable, check this box to nominate a standby, a designated standby guardian. And then the date and signature of the alleged incapacitated individual. So that is how you fill out form PC625. We put this together at the Wayne County Probate Court because we care. Have a great day.